Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Skip Ace Fantasy Disc Golf Podcast. I'm your host, John Van Derzen. Once again, you're probably hearing this in the Smashbox feed. This will probably be the last episode that I put out on the Smashbox feed. Everything else is going to go to the Skip Ace feed. So if you're interested in subscribing to that one, please go and do that. You can find it under any of the podcasting apps. Just look up Skip Ace or Skip Ace Fantasy Disc Golf. It'll show right up, I promise. So we're here on episode two. We're going to do a quick recap of Waco. Not so much talking about the results because that could take forever. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to recap my picks. My MPO picks last week were Kale LaVisca, Charlie Moore, and Eric Oakley. Now, Kale, that's a for sure win. He once again finished in the top 10. He's like a 1030 rated player, maybe 1029. So you really got some good bang for your buck there because I believe he was the 20th highest rated player. So he went 10 spots above where his rating was. Ultimately, that's what you're looking for. Uh, the other pick I had was Charlie Moore. Charlie Moore, I, he took 52nd place, so I was hoping for a little higher, but his he, it was above his rating, so he was just a little bit better than you know where he kind of averaged out. So I'm going to call that one a slight win for me. There were actually only three other players above him that had a lower rating, so he, ultimately you got really good value for him. So again, I'm going to give myself the win on that one. And then there was Eric Oakley. Eric Oakley was my other my pick. He finished 35th place, just barely above his rating and his position in general. So I'm calling that one a push. You didn't lose anything. You didn't really gain anything on it. So Eric Oakley, 35th. So two wins and a push. That's what I'm I'm rating myself. Last week, I told you to stay away from some players as well for Waco. And the players I told you to stay away from were Ricky Wysocki. And Ricky didn't even compete. We said, you know, if you picked him, I hope you changed it. I, I message out there on Facebook alerting everybody of the players that, you know, were no-shows. So if you're not a member of the Facebook group, please go ahead and take a look. I think there's a link in Skip Base, so you can kind of take a look at that. I said stay away from Double G. And Double G finished 68th place. No brainer, another W for John. I, but if you picked him, that was maybe a loss for you. And my third and final pick to stay away from was Kevin Jones. Wow. I think I took the big fat L there. <laughs> KJ was super solid this week. He played very, very well. He was in it up until the end. I didn't expect that. So really, I'm going to take the loss on that one. What a... What a that was a bad pick on my part. Kevin Jones, congratulations. He hadn't finished well at Waco in the past, but he turns it around this year. Went LVC to Waco. What a great play. Um, we'll move on to my FPO picks for Waco. I had three of them as well. Paige Shue, Madison Walker, Caroline Henderson. Paige Shue ended up in eighth place. No one finished higher than her with a lower rating than her. So again, Good bang for your buck with your ratings points. Those are the type of players that you want to be able to have on your team. Madison Walker finished 27th place, pretty much right at her rating. Um, I'm going to kind of consider that one a loss. You could have gotten better bang for your buck. You could have gotten a better deal with your ratings points if you would have gone with someone other than Madison. Now, Madison finished okay, like I said, right about where her rating is. But if you're looking at it from a fantasy perspective, I'm going to take the L on that one. And then Caroline Henderson, she had a disastrous first round. She was put on that lead card with Paige Pierce, Kristen Tatar, and one other player who I can't remember right now. But she folded. Not only did she fold, she left the building. She just turned her cards in. Um Ultimately, she she performed very poorly in the first round. But the upside, she shot two. Their next two rounds were each 50 points above her rating. She ended up in 29th. So I'm going to say that's a slight win because with as low of a rating as she had to finish 29th just behind Madison Walker, uh, I, I still think you got pretty good value for Caroline Henderson. Now, the FPL players that I told you to stay away from. I told you to stay away from Holland Hanley. And I told you to stay away from Ella Hansen. 
a win and a loss. <laughs> Holland was a big disappointment this uh, this event based on where her rating was. She is something like the 10th or 9th or 11th ra- highest rated player out there, and she finished well below that. She needed to finish about 13 spots higher in order for her to just kind of break even. My big loss was Ella Hansen. Wow, did I pick this one wrong? Ella came out and absolutely crushed it. I expected somewhere from a 10th to 15th, maybe even a 20th place, uh, based on how Ella normally throws and the, the Waco course. She just absolutely nailed it. She took second place. You know, coming down to that 18th hole, uh, just those nerves. The nerves got to her, and ultimately she took second place. And I, that's a big, fat, wrong call on my part. So I'm here to fess up. Every week I'm going to give you some picks. I'm going to tell you how those picks turned out, and I'm going to try to be honest with myself if they were good or bad. And again, the Kevin Jones and the Ella Hansen, two bad picks on my part. But I had more wins than losses this week, so count on that. All right, let's talk about the Open at Austin presented by Lone Star Discs. Lone Star Discs is coincidentally the sponsor of our pro member event matchup. That's right. They're giving us a $100 gift certificate to their store this week. So if you are a pro member, go out and sign up for that event matchup. If not, man, what are you waiting for? It's only $10 for the entire year. And we're only two events in. So we have the rest of the Elite Series, the Majors. You've got a lot of chances. Get in on that. There's plenty of prizes yet to be had. The Open at Austin is the newest event on the DGPT Tour, so this is going to be a little more difficult because there's really no history to go off of. Um, It's held on a golf course, but it's not a bomber golf course. It's actually coming in at just over 8,700 feet, so it's short compared to most of the rest of the tour other than Waco. I took a look at the caddy guide, and there is a lot of OB on this course. A lot of OB lining the fairways. Some of it is woods. Some of it is long grass. Uh, so my picks this week are going to really be players that have a, a tendency to have like a lower OB percentage than other competitors in their group. So let's talk MPO first. My first pick for MPO this week is going to be Nico LaCastro. Nico's about the 17th highest rated player at the event, but he has some very, very good controlled distance. I think that if you're going to pick a high value player to go along with one of the big boys like Eagle and Paul, which we're all looking for, I think Nico is a really good pick to put up in your lineup. And I feel like I need to give you a value pick as well, because if you load up in a lot of high point players, you're going to need that value pick. And I'm going to go Evan Scott. Evan is about 20th in OB rate last year. So he was the 20th best player going OB. And I I looked at that, man. A lot of those players above him didn't play as many events as him and were a lot of European names. So people that aren't even in this event. So although he's 20th, ultimately he's much better off in this particular tournament. So I believe that with his control distance, it's going to push him up the leaderboard above other players rated around the 10, 15 mark where he's at. And like I said, that's the key. Find your low rated players. They're going to play above their rating. That's what you need to do in order to win. And my final recommendation for the MPO, Jake Ebenheimer. Jake is rated fourth in UDISC's PPI, which is their precision power index. So that's a combination of distance and accuracy. He is a slight value pick rated at about 1021. So if you have the extra ratings points and you don't trust Evan Scott, try to squeeze Jake Hebenheimer in there. I think he's going to do well for you this week. In FPO, the players that you want to look for, they don't necessarily need to be long throwers. The FPO course is even shorter. And a lot of these throws, a lot of these holes are sub 350 feet. So ultimately, you're not going to need the 400 to 450 foot bomber players. I'm assuming that you're probably taking Kristen Tatar as one of your picks for FPO. So you want to pair her up with, if you have the ratings points, a cat, a page, 
um, Holland Hanley. But let's assume that you don't and you want to save some of those rating points for MPO. At 931, I'm going to recommend Stephanie Vincent. Stephanie's an Austin, Texas native. She has some local knowledge of the course, and I think she could be an incredible value here at 931. My other pick is also rated 931, and it's Anakin Sten. She played really well at Waco last week, and I think I'm going to ride the hot hand to another good finish in Austin. Let's talk about players to avoid. Again, tough one. The players you want to avoid are the high-rated players that you think are going to finish worse here. Knowing there's a bunch of OB. Who am I avoiding? Anthony Barella. Now, the distance could come as an advantage on some of these holes, but looking at the caddy guide, I see a lot of well-placed OB that really could deter that. And I just don't trust Anthony's distance with accuracy. We all know he can crush. Maybe the furthest golf thrower on tour right now. But is that going to be useful? I think at his rating, just a little bit scary on this course. And the other player that I'm going to avoid, hurts my heart to say it, close your ears, MVP people, Simon Lazat. Now, Simon doesn't throw nearly as far as he used to. He's obviously dialing it back, but there's been rumors of a little bit of elbow issue, and I don't know if those are true or not, but Simon hasn't always been the most conservative player. So with again, with the amount of OB risking 1,037 rating points on him. I just don't see that as a good plan this event. Now, that could come back to bite me. Find out next week. On the FPO side, I think it's obvious who I'm going to avoid. Paige Pierce. Paige doesn't have a great history in Texas recently at these elite events. And we all know she is not known for her conservative play. She is an OB magnet. And she doesn't even throw a Discraft magnet. But her OB rate in general is ridiculously higher than a lot of other players. So avoid Paige Pierce. The other FPO player that I would avoid this week is Sarah Hokum. Now, again, this isn't a bomber course, 350 feet. But Sarah excels when there are gaps to hit. That's where she elevates herself above other players. That's why she finished well at Waco. That middle of that woods course, she plays well. It doesn't appear that this is a course where you're going to have to really carve the lines. There's a few gaps to hit, whether off the tee or towards the green. Think of kind of the the Portland courses from last year. Now, I haven't seen this course, and it's not nearly as beautiful, but that's the that's the vibe I get from these holes. And Sarah's the 10th highest rated player on the FPO side, but I don't expect her to finish top 10 this week. I think you save Sarah Hokum for later in the season when really hitting those lines are going to be essential. Let's talk a little bit about draft leagues. Now, these are leagues, obviously, where you have your team already. Now, you just need to pick and choose who you want to play. You can go back and take a look. Uh, you know, if you want to listen to some of the players I picked earlier, if you've got a, a a position where you're wavering back and forth, by all means, think about what I said earlier. But I'm also going to talk a little bit about waiver wire. Now, the waivers run mm, probably last night, but if these players are still out there. Go and pick them up. So let's look at MPO. James Proctor. Proctor's only owned in 51% of leagues right now. What are you people doing? Go out and grab him right now if he's on the if he's on your free agency or if you're listening to this tonight yet and he's on the waiver wire, make a claim for him. James has been playing really well at these DGPT events lately and I don't foresee that stopping. And your waiver wire pick for FPO? Aria Castorita. Aria could be a really solid pickup this week while we're in Texas. This is her home state. Aria just took 16th at Waco, beating out many of the people you probably have on your team. Uh, Holland Hanley, Rebecca Cox, Maria Oliva, Madison Walker. I don't think anyone would blame you if you picked up Aria Castorita and either stashed her on your bench 
Or I think she's an okay start this week, depending on how the rest of your team looks. So those are the two picks, if they're out on your waiver wire, that I would take a look at. That's James Proctor and Aria Castorita. Let's talk about Survivor. Not the CBS show. Your Survivor picks. Now, Survivor is tough because none of us really know this course that well. There's no history on it. I'm really, you know, you're probably picking. This is where I recommend picking one of the studs. Go with your Ricky if he plays. Although Ricky might be scary still with the wrist. We don't know what's going to happen. He could have to pull out halfway through the event. You might want to save Ricky. But I have faith in Eagle, Paul, KJ, Calvin, Dickerson. But those are obvious picks. Everyone, Anyone can make those picks. Let's talk about maybe some of the players you're not thinking of. Maybe you want to save those players for later. The picks that I would look at this week for a survivor. Isaac Robinson, Scott Withers, and here's my here's my stretch. This is a risky one. So only pull this one out if you're really desperate. Ezra Aderhold. Again, we're looking at some distance. I think distance will be important. And I think I got a good feeling about Ezra this week. He's just coming off Waco where he shot amazingly poor. <laughs> Can you shoot amazingly poor? Well, if you can, he did. Because it was bad. So I, I'm i counting on a bounce back week from Ezra Aderhold. I think he can break that top 15 this week. I really hope that everybody is excited to watch a brand new course this week and a new city where the tour hasn't been. I think it's going to be really exciting. And remember, don't forget to sign up the Skip Ace Pro to get access to the Open at Austin event for pro members only, and get yourself a chance at that Lone Star Discs $100 gift certificate. Once again, shout out to Lone Star Discs for stepping up with a $100 gift certificate to our pro members. Can't thank them enough. Signing off, you can expect these hopefully every Monday right before an Elite Series event. Thank you, and good night.